I've spent most of my professional life trying to understand how mountains form. <clears throat> and uh, that's why we went to Eastern Greenland. Uh, there are magnificent structures. Uh, there are some of the most dramatic features on the earth, and I think it's only natural to want to understand them better. Plate tectonics has provided us with a pretty good theory for uh, how mountains form. They form where uh, plates converge or plates come together. Uh, and so you can explain a lot of mountain systems like the Andes or the, um, the mountains that occur in the Aleutian Islands and in Alaska and so forth with this model. But there's another kind of collision that occurs when two continents uh, crash into each other. I, I, I'm trying to use this word crash carefully because you can't think of screeching uh, breaks or anything like that. The, uh, the collision occurs over tens of millions of years. We don't really understand that process particularly well. We know it happens when ocean basins close and the continents on either side crash into each other. Uh, the theory that I've been pursuing is that when that happens, one continent will actually slide beneath the other continent deep into the earth, into a part of the earth we call the mantle. The old theory of plate tectonics said you can't subduct a continent into the mantle because it's too buoyant. It's like pushing wood into water. Wood wants to float. And the idea was that you couldn't cause continents to go into the mantle. I've developed this theory, along with others, that you can indeed push the continents into the mantle. It goes down maybe 100, 150, sometimes even deeper, maybe 300 kilometers. And then it comes back up again. So we call the process uh, crustal subduction. And then when it comes back up, we call it crustal eduction. While it's down there, it gets squeezed and it forms uh, these beautiful rocks called eclogites, which are red and green and lovely, and we call them Christmas tree rocks. As you know, there are glaciers on Greenland, and those glaciers sort of cleared away a lot of cover uh, exposing the rocks. And it's too cold for vegetation, so there are no trees or bushes to hide things from view. So it's a splendid exposure. Richard loved it. <laughs> I mean, how many students at Queens College get to go to Greenland? <laughs> and he's always been interested in the outdoors, and he's a good camper, and he was great in the field. He was, had wonderful stamina. He took part in mapping and in measuring the structures and in collecting the samples. He is now back at Queens College, and he's preparing these samples for analysis. He's going to try to date these rocks under my supervision. So hopefully we'll get some good ages, and that'll tell us a lot about what happened to these rocks. Oh, it takes a few days to get there. It's hard to get to parts of Greenland. We flew by commercial jet to Reykjavik, which is the capital of um, Iceland, and then we flew on a smaller plane to northern Iceland, and from there <coughs> we flew on an even smaller airplane uh, to a dirt airfield in eastern Greenland. So we arrived there, uh, got our gear, and then were helicoptered to the area that we were studying, Liverpool land. It's very rugged terrain. Uh, so there's always the danger you're going to fall off a cliff or you're going to have a rock fall on you or you're going to trip off of a boulder. Um, but we were well prepared. We had, uh, we had a first aid kit. We had communication equipment. Uh, we had a satellite phone and we had um, personal location beacons. And so if any of us were to become injured, uh, we would uh, contact the helicopter service and they would have been able to come and rescue us. It's funny, I've been to Greenland now four times and I've seen bear footprints in the snow near the camp, but I've never seen actually a polar bear. And we had very heavy rifles and we always traveled in pairs or groups of three or four. Uh, so I think we were all set if a bear were to come. Usually they run away. The third danger is really abrupt changes in weather. Uh, the first week we were there, the weather was beautiful. We could walk around in short pants and t-shirts. And then a violent storm came along, and it was abrupt. It was just wham! There was this storm. And it started to blow down our cooking tent, and so we had to run outside and take down the cooking tent, flatten it out, put rocks on it. And it was bitter cold, and we were being blown away from the tent. And then we all ran to our sleeping tents and huddled in our sleeping tents. And fortunately, they were weighed down with lots of rocks and lots of ropes. And so we were OK. Um, it lasted for two days. And so we just read in our tents and lamented the fact we couldn't be in the field.